Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself, he is. But wanting your mother's voice, the other must be held the worthier. And would my mother look, but with my eyes? Rather her look, but with her judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I do beseech your grace, that I may know what may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death, or to abjure the other society of men. Therefore, for him, I will prepare to die, for, to live, grow, and die in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto her ladyship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the ceiling day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond and fellowship. Upon that day, I will prepare to die, or for disobedience to your mother's will, or else to wed Demetrius, for on Diadon's altar to protest, for ever, so I, sincerity, and single love. Relent, sweet Hermia and Lysander. Yield thy grace title to my certain right. 
You have a mother's love, Demetrius. Give me Hermes, do you marry her? Scorn for all Alexander! True, he hath my love. And what is mine, my love shall rend him. And she is mine! And all my right of her, I do estate unto Demetrius. I, my lord, am as well derived as he. As well possessed, my love is more than his. My fortune in every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage to Demetrius's. And what's more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll about it to his head, make love to neither's daughter Helena, and she, sweet lady, dotes, dotes in idolatry, nay, devoutly dotes upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with her, as Demetrius there speak of, I did, my mind did lose it. So come, Medeus, and come, Demetrius. With duty and desire we follow you. I know, my love. Why is your cheek so pale? By chance the roses there do fade so fast. They're like for want of rain, which I can well deceive them from the tempest of mine eyes. I mean, I could ever learn by tale of history. The course of true love never did run smooth, but that it was different in blood. Oh, cross, too high to be enthralled, too low. Or else misgraft by age of years. Spite! Too old to be engaged, too young! Well stood upon by choice of friends. Oh hell! To choose love by another's eyes. Or if there was sympathy in choice, war, death, and sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, short as any dream, brief as the lightning in the collied night, that in the spleen unfolds both heaven and hell, and there a man had the power to say, Behold! And the jaws of darkness do devour it up. How quickly bright things come to confusion. If then, true lovers have ever been crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross. It's due to thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears. Poor fancies follow us. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I am a widow once dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house, uh, seven leagues. She respects me as her only son. There, Hermia, <coughs> I marry thee. And to that place where the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. And if thou lovest me, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. In the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once to do observance to the morn of May. There will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bone, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which knitteth souls and prospers loves, and by that fire which burned the Carthage queen when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men have broke, and no more than ever women spoke. In that same place thou hast appointed me, to where truly I'll meet with thee. You promise that. Look, here comes Helena. God speed for Helena. Whither away? Oh, call you me fair to bury them and stay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes have no sounds from your tongue, sweet air, more terrible than night, shepherd's ear. Oh, that my ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue, sweet melody. With a world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I leave to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns could teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. Oh, the more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty with that fault were mine. Take comfort. He shall no more see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. But then, what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. Helen. 
to you our minds will unfold. Tomorrow night when Phoebe doth behold her silvery visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass, a time which lover's flight doth still conceal. Through Athens' gates we have devised to steal. And in the woods, where you and I, upon faint primrose beds will want to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet. There, my Lysander and myself shall meet. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us. And good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander. We must start our sight from lovers' food tomorrow, deep midnight. Fare thee well, my Fabio. As you dote upon him, may Demetrius dote upon you. Adieu, Helen. How happy some o'er other can be! Through Athens I have brought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so, and he will not know all but what he do know. And as he errs, doting on her in his eyes, so I admire him his qualities. Things base and vile that hold no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is wing cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked on her in this fiery eye. He hailed down oath that he was only mine. And when this hailsome heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the woods will he tomorrow night pursue her. For this thanks, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. For hearing me, I do enrich my pain. 